Hi friends, thanks for watching and welcome to my channel if you're new. I am so excited to share with you part two of my spring home renovation series. I freshened up my laundry room that was in desperate need of attention and finally installed my kitchen backsplash. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get started. So the first thing I wanna do is show you guys what this laundry room looked like before I even started any of the work. And I'm gonna insert a picture here of what it actually looked like even before it got to this point. There were a couple of cabinets that were already um, installed when I bought the house and some shelving and things that I just knew that I didn't wanna keep. And it was gonna be really, really hard to paint around those things. There's a lot of stains on the wall. Um, almost like from a spill or something. I'm not sure what they're from, but this is how the laundry room looked when I bought the house. So I knew that there was a lot of work that needed to be done in here, but it's such a small space that I put it off for a really long time thinking that it wouldn't take that long. And in theory, it really only took maybe three or four days from start to finish, but almost every square inch of this laundry room needs paint. The trim needs to be painted. The walls need to be painted. The doors need to be painted. And then of course I need all new outlet covers and light switch covers and things like that. So this is what we are working with to start. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is take everything out of the laundry room. The only things that I'm leaving in are the washer and dryer just because it would have been too hard to try to get those out even with some kind of appliance dolly or something like that. We just decided to leave them in so that I could get this project done and just work around them. So I'm taking everything out and then I'm just gonna wipe down a few things with a multi-surface spray just to make sure that it is clean before I get started. I know it seems kind of silly, I'm just gonna make a big mess anyway, but I wanted things to be clean to start. So I have to go into my renovation room, I guess you could call it, to get a screwdriver. And I realized I haven't shown you guys this room yet. You can see it is like full of like renovation supplies and tools and it's just kind of like a storage room for all the stuff that I need, plus all of the doors that go in my upstairs but we lovingly, lovingly refer to this as the party room. I don't know where that started, somewhere along in the renovation journey. We just started calling the room that had all the stuff the party room. I don't know if that's just because it sounds way more fun than it really is, but anyway, I'm gonna grab a screwdriver and then get started. using this spackle here to fill in some of the holes that I hadn't already filled in. I saved you guys from having to watch me fill in every single one of these holes because I had already done so much work. You can see all the spots on the wall where I already have some spackle. So I just went ahead and wiped down the walls in case there were any cobwebs or lint or dust or anything that had built up on the walls. And then I went in with my putty knife and re-spackled and re-sanded everything to make sure that all of the holes were filled in fully.
part one of my spring home renovation series and I'm gonna have that linked in the description box below for you guys. In that video, I do my stairs, I paint the stair risers, and I also install some new cabinet poles and handles in my kitchen. So if you guys are thinking about doing some kind of home project like that in your own house, then you definitely don't wanna miss that video either. <laughs> back over every spot that I spackled with my sanding block and really this is one of those things that you you have to feel it with your hand you can see where you need to um, like lightly sand over with your eyes but I think that the best way to do it is just put your hand up there on the wall and see if it feels smooth you can even close your eyes and see if it feels to you like natural wall or if it feels like you still have some extra putty that needs to be um, sanded down Okay, so I'm getting ready to paint, so I thought I would show you guys the um, primer that I'm using. I'm sure as you noticed me doing my spackling and stuff, you saw um, places where, like here for example, there's like staining, um, over here there's like some spots and stuff. So I wanted to make sure that I used a primer that would not only give me a nice base, but would hide stains. So this is the one that I'm deciding to use. I used this on my stairs as well, if you watched. Um, that video, then you would have seen me use the same paint when I primed my stairs. So it says here that it will hide dark colors, which should be good for stains, right? Blocks common stains. Glossy trim, which is good because I'm also gonna be using this on all the trim in here that has not already been painted, which is good because then I'm gonna go back and use a glossy um, coat for the trim. And then it has good adhesion top coat in one hour. I'm obviously not gonna be painting today, but if I needed to go back and do a little more of the primer, I could do that. It is a water-based paint, which is good, and I didn't know it was good for siding, but that's cool. So this is the paint that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna start by using, I have my small paint pan here. I'm just gonna go around and just do some edging, and it's not a big deal. I haven't done the ceiling in here either, and I'm doing all the trim. So I really don't have to tape anything. I'm doing the door. Everything has to be primed, pretty much. So I, mean, I don't have to tape for this coat, which is awesome. I can just kind of go and I'm going to edge around things. And if I get a little bit of paint on the trim, again, no big deal. Um, and then I hopefully will have time today to roll, but we'll see how much I get done. So I probably should note that I did take a vacuum and clean up all of that sanding dust before I moved on to painting. I just didn't film that for you guys. You definitely want to make sure that you wipe down and get all of the sanding dust off before you start painting, otherwise you're going to get grit in the paint. So like I said, we are starting with the primer and I am so thankful that I did not have to tape because of course I'm priming both the trim and the walls here and so I was just able to go to town and make sure that I hit every spare piece of wood and drywall with the primer and it soaked in so quickly. I feel like within five seconds it was already dry. I don't think these walls had been painted since this house was built.
going in with a roller now and I used the small roller here just because there were so many tight spots in which I needed a little roller. So I just used this small roller all over the whole wall. And you can already see that it's covering up some of the pencil marks that were on the wall and it's just kind of getting rid of that dingy color. I think that the primer was such a good choice to do before I put the paint on because it really just made things fresh. Okay, so I've done like half of this wall and it is looking a ton better, except for this one stain right here. This is gonna drive me absolutely nuts. I'm gonna have to figure out something to use on this. I have a feeling there's probably a couple of other stains, like there's a small one, there's a small one, I don't know if you can see it like right there. I'm gonna have to figure out something to use to cover these up because I can't leave it like this and it's driving me nuts. Hey guys, so today is going to be part two or day two of getting the laundry room done and I'm standing in here now and I'm really happy with how everything turned out from the other day. Um, there are still a lot of spots that need primer and then of course I need to go back and put paint and stuff all over the walls. Um, the part that I couldn't get to when I was painting the other day was behind the washer and dryer. You can see here, I've pulled the washer and dryer out away from the wall so I can get back behind it and I can paint back there. So my goal is to have everything completely finished um, today primer. I don't think I'm probably gonna get to like actually painting, but if everything can be primed and stuff, then I should be able to get to painting uh, like in the next couple of days. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some paint and get started. <laughs> Once everything was primed with this white primer, I went in with the real paint color and this is what it looked like when it was finished. I didn't film any of painting the real color because it was basically the same process that I did with the primer, but I put all new outlet covers on all the outlets, all new light switch covers on the light switches. I used the semi-gloss paint on all of the trim in here. I decided to leave the door brown because I thought that that looked really awesome and gave a really nice pop of that wood color. I am gonna have some Wayne's coating here on this wall that I still have to install. You can also see the new hardware on the door there, which I am so excited about. The door was painted white. Everything looks so much crisper and so fresh. I am so happy with how this turned out. All right, guys, we are moving on to project number two, which is my subway tile kitchen backsplash. We got a lot of different products to make this project happen. We got our mortar, which is the adhesive, which sticks the tiles to the wall. We have our trowel there, which um, helps to spread the adhesive. And then we have a bunch of different tools and things that we use to cut all of the various pieces of tile. So that thing there that you see is a giant tile cutter. And then we got a small scribe to actually etch into the tile so that we could snap them and make sure that they were all the right size. And this is the actual tile that I ended up going with. So it is just a standard subway tile size and it is in a very bright white color which of course if you guys have been following me for a while you know that I love bright white and so I got a little bit of footage of my boyfriend doing some of the various cuts that we had to make on the tile he did all of the cutting just because I was way too nervous to use this and I was also way too nervous to use the wet saw but basically the way this works is you just take the wheel and score the tile and then you're able to bring the hammer thing down and it actually snaps the tile into two equal pieces. So this worked perfectly to get straight down the middle cuts. And then we did the same thing to get a bunch of smaller pieces. It took a lot of trial and error. We broke several tiles. So when you're doing a project like this, you definitely wanna make sure that you're getting extra tile, somewhere between 10 to 15% extra tile because you're gonna make mistakes. That's just gonna happen. And so we used this and then we also used a stone here. This is like a, basically like a sander for tile. And so I'm just making the edges really smooth. You can see how thin we had to get some of those tile pieces. It was crazy how small they had to be. So I'm just smoothing out the different edges. 
And then we also used to get some of our tile cuts a wet saw. So this worked really well for our tile cuts that were around our electrical outlets. Of course, I was way too nervous to use the wet saw, so I let Jack do it. But you can see here that he's getting really, really precise cuts. And not only that, but it's really clean. So you don't have to go back in with a wet saw and clean up the edges. We also use this tile snipper or nipper to get some of the little excess pieces out. Um, it kind of works to chip away at some of the different pieces of tile. And then I'm just getting started with putting things up. So really the hardest part of this project was going around the outlets. Once you got all the way around the outlets and the hard pieces were put up, the rest of it was a piece of cake. You just follow that brick pattern all the way across. you guys are wondering I am using 1 8 inch spacers between the tiles and you can see that I already have a small piece of backsplash that was existing from when I bought the house and it's um, the granite that matches the countertop and so I wanted to leave that where it was I didn't want to take it out and bring the tile all the way down to the countertop so I left that granite backsplash in and started my tile from there all the way up to the cabinets and so I'm using those 1 8 inch spacers all around the edges of the tile and then all the way up to the top where the cabinets are. footage here from when it started to get dark outside I had to use a work light to finish up the tiling and then the next day we moved on to grouting and this was actually more challenging than the tiling was I don't know if it was because this particular corner is so annoying just because I'm really short and it's hard to reach across the counter to make sure that you get all of the grout into those edges but we covered the outlets with tape so that way we didn't get any grout in the electrical boxes and I just went across all of the tile with this float and this light gray grout and filled in any of the gaps that there were and then we went around and caulked with a white silicone caulk in all the edges where the wall met the tile and the wall um, or the countertop met the tile and this is what it looked like when it was finished guys I am so impressed with how this turned out this is one of those projects that I was very nervous that I was not going to be able to execute to make it look like a professional did it but I am so pleased with how this turned out the outlet covers look amazing the lines are so straight and I love how the grout matches the countertop color so that is going to be it for today's video I hope you guys enjoyed it if you do please don't forget to hit the like button subscribe to my channel if you haven't already I would love to have you and I will see you guys again really soon in a brand new video. Bye guys!